this is the Crossman 2240 I've got all my tools out there I'm gonna, gonna strip it down and do the modifications on the valve and on the hammer spring I'll show you in stages bits and pieces of well every, everything's stripped and that is the, the hammer spring I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with it inside there you put either a small ball bear on or a type of screw head just to raise the spring a little bit and give it a bit more tension yeah. it slots into there you could put something into there as well and this is the valve where the CO2 goes, goes into there when you drop it down the chamber and as you can see it's got a seam there I'm going to split that open, well not split it, unscrew it and before I unscrew it I'll be taping it up just so I don't scratch it or mark it or anything I've got pliers and stuff there what I'm going to be using more grip type things and once I brought it in part I'll get back to this this is the valve in half I've just unscrewed it and it's got a lot of coils in there just let the camera focus I'm going to cut about three or four of them off if it will focus I'll zoom that out and that's all it is move the camera in a bit closer there you go I'm going to cut about three or four of them coils off well the threads I should say and in there the threads go right the way down as well I'll just pull this out threads go right down what I could do is get me Dremel and grind that out a bit as well just leave about four threads all the way down take some of those out at the back and it would make the chamber quite a bit larger and it should improve the power by about a quarter if I'm lucky it might be a third so it's quite a, quite a lot to be taken out it's the same in them threads I'm taking half of them up will make all the difference right so I'll get back to you when I've cut it off and put it back so that's what I've taken off there's about three threads there but there was four when I started it's just that you've got the thickness of the hacksaw blade to take into consideration as well you've got to leave a few threads on there just to make sure it's going to tighten down properly without busting because it is only brass and I filed it down a bit smooth it off I will rinse it with a bit of oil just to make sure it's going to be clean there's no bits of filings or nothing in there and the next thing I'm going to do take my Dremel into there get some of them threads out the back <coughs> because there's not a lot of room in here by the time you get all this in here as well it's, there's just very small amount of room for the gas, right, for the CO2 to go in there nothing at all, so the, the more room you can get in there the better it's always a good idea to do these modes and it will improve the gun by about a quarter I'm hoping I don't know my rod catcher last year, the rod catcher that's a 20 <coughs> 2450B and it did make a lot of difference instead of getting about 30 odd shots of the pellets to the, the little canister of CO2 I was getting 24 instead of 34 so it improved it by about a third I'm hoping it does the same on this one well I've getting all the modifications done I showed you before I cut that, that amount of the coil the threads off and I've had my Dremel into there might be a bit hard to see but I have taken quite a few of the threads, the bottom threads out didn't want to go too far because I didn't want to damage any of those top threads where it's got to be screwed together 
there was quite a lot of and I'll give it a good blast note on some WD forty, some some oil. Rinsed all rinsed it all out, cleaned it out properly to make sure there's no fibers or nothing left in. And this is the adjustment I'm doing to the hammer spring, just a small screw into the bottom of it. And that just drops into there. You can do it one handed. And that just goes in. Strengthens up the hammer spring. And that makes all the difference. Then mods. Right, so I'll put it back together and I'll test it. Well, put the whole thing back together. Bit of a claw on. I'm just hoping I haven't damaged any any threads or any of the seals, anything like that. Took me time, done it properly. It's only taken a few minutes on the video, but it has took us about an hour and a half in real time. Right, I've put it all back together. And I'm just hoping it's going to be as powerful as what I'm thinking it's going to be. That pellet hole there is the one I've done before I've done the modifications on it. And the pellet has went in a good few millimetres, maybe it's a centimetre. So I'm going to try and shoot down here somewhere, hopefully, in a clear patch. And just see if there's any difference. And I'll just set the, set the camera up. And hope that it doesn't fall down. Load the gun. I'm using the same pellets as what I used last time. I knew that would happen. I'll just stand that lid there. Just to pop the camera up. Right, so. I'll be taking the shot. And we'll see what sort of difference this makes. Hopefully there should be some. Hit it right in the bottom there. It looks to be a bit more damage than what the other pellet made. What I'll do, I'll find a decent piece on here. It's just a couple of little holes there. I'll put another one in. Just to see if, it, if I can hit it more central this time. I've got my homemade silencer on so it doesn't sound half as loud as what it would without it. Right, I'll take the shot a bit closer so I don't miss it. No, not miss it, but... It's definitely doing a lot more damage to the... to the wax. It's cracked it all the way up and right across there. And that's the original. Like before I've done the modifications, you can see the difference. It squashed the pellet inside. That's quite good. see the damage on the wax compared to the small little bit of damage there it's done a lot of damage there and that's nicely in the middle and it has cracked it all around yeah so it's definitely made it a bit more powerful I'm pleased with them results I'll test it outside when we get a bit decent weather I'm not sure if I showed you the first time, but there's a that's a homemade silence I would have made. That's just a bottle cap in there, it's been glued in with some proper glue type stuff and a bit of copper pipe in there. It's been sealed in properly. It only goes it only goes to about there, so they've got a hollow got a hollow chamber in the middle. Well at the front end of it. But it does work really well, it costs nothing to make, just stuff what I already had. That's just PVC pipe. And uh, look at the bottle pop on the top. 
bit of copper pipe with something holding it like around it loads of, oh what is it it's the type of putty stuff what you mix together and you just glue it in get it nice and central measure it that's all I've done got it nice and nice and level and it does work right so what I'm going to do is take a shot with and without it just to just so you can actually hear the difference I'll just shoot into the camera okay. shoot into the camera shoot into the candle as usual right so the first shot will be without the silencer That was loud. Much louder than what I thought. Shouldn't be firing that indoors at this. Right, and this next shot is with the silencer. Look quieter. Big difference. It's making a big difference that gun. Doing a lot of damage since I've done the, the valve modifications on it. Well, anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. It costs nothing to do it if you've already got bits and pieces of tones yourself. Very easy. And a lot of these CO2 guns have that kind of cartridge. Well, the gas, what is it, um, the valve, even the pump guns have the valve, so you, you can do that modification on them as well, you've just got to be very careful of what you're doing. Thanks again for watching.